Hello everybody and welcome back to World of Warships Legends. My name is Spartan Elite 43 and tonight we are back in the Montana and it's a special episode because I got a double feature for you guys. I got two great games to showcase for you guys. One is going to be a little bit atypical, something that I don't normally do, but actually worked out in a uh, glorious fashion, as you're about to witness. And the other is just a ridiculously fun and good game. So, hopefully you guys are ready. And, thank you guys so much. You guys' support over the last, uh, forever actually, but for the last couple of days has been ridiculous. We've gained well over 100 new subscribers. We're well on our way getting very close to that 40,000 subscriber mark, and I just gotta say thank you guys. You guys are absolutely fantastic, and I couldn't do it without you. Literally, couldn't. So, thank you. Now, we're in the Montana, we're on north, we spawn in the north, and we are on the east side of the map. Now, I've done this in the past, and I've shown that it can be viable, but you have to, you have to do it correctly. But, it's also not recommended due to the fact that how long it takes you to get around the map. Your team needs to be able to hold long enough for this to actually work out. Now, fortunately for me, I'm in a battleship. And I've got a cruiser and a destroyer over here. Now, Mines decides that he wants to start shooting at me. And uh, I hate to tell you, boys, but this Mines reversing angle. Wait for it. Pow! <laughs> it doesn't end well. <laughs> Ah, uh, and the best part is he only hit me with like one or two shells. Like, dude literally got like 1,500 damage off of me. It's just one of those things where you got to weigh the risks with the rewards. And in a cruiser like that, if you're at that kind of range, you're not likely to land a lot of health or a lot of damage. And if you're just going to reverse in a straight line, angled to a battleship, and uh, not try to dodge the shells, well, your game's gonna be over very quickly. And uh, Montana does what Montana does best, which is just bonk people. That's the best way to put it. It bonks, all right? That, that's it. Like, every everybody that you shoot at in Montana, if they're dumb enough to get this thing a broadside, they're getting bonked. It's just the way it goes. Like, people say that this is not a good ship and I can I can understand kind of where they're coming from when they say oh well it's got 16 inch guns it's not the best in the world because it doesn't overmatch many things at its tier uh, it's very large it doesn't turn very well it's not particularly fast like there's a list of things that people rattle off about what's wrong with the ship and why they don't like the ship and while I do understand that I also understand that this is literally the most accurate battleship in the game, and there is no argument to be had there. Montana is disgustingly accurate. And if you get into positions of power, good crossfire opportunities, bad things are going to happen to the enemy. Okay? And we're going to showcase that in both of the games coming up. So... Here you can see, I'm going to do two things. First of all, I know there's a smoke screen here, which means there's likely to be a destroyer right next to me. Sorry, I'm recording this at 1 o'clock in the morning, so just I, I'm yawning, so I apologize. But there's a destroyer right here. Now, I anticipated, with my destroyer moving in, and my crews are there for support, I'm anticipating this destroyer to come my direction. So I'm going to slow down, I'm going to wait for him to come out, and I'm going to help my team get rid of him. That's the goal. What I didn't expect was that my Shimakaze was going to fill that smoke screen full of torpedoes like he should. Like, that's a genius way to play uh, against other destroyers when you're in a ship that, while it does have good guns, doesn't have the best fire rate, doesn't have the most hit point pool. So, like, going head-to-head -head with other destroyers isn't recommended, even though it's very possible. But, you do have 15 demon fish that are capable of one-shotting every single destroyer you come up against. If they All take stations, it concentrate fire like that. On the target. <laughs> so at that point, I give them a big old well done or a thank you. And then I move on down the road. I've got a Yamato. A date with a Yamato that I am absolutely drooling over. I've done this exact scenario multiple times. Where I come around this mountain. The Yami's been reversing the entire game. He sees me and then decides that he needs to come after me. All right, I have been in this situation multiple times. I have yet to lose this situation. However, this situation turns into a bit of a problem. Not because of the Amato's amazing gameplay or that he does anything in particularly amazing as we bounce four shells off of the Amato. But uh, this Kuchizov over here is like, oh my god. 
I can actually sit here and do some things and 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 he's not paying attention to the minimap clearly. Dude is just sitting here waiting. 12 and a half kilometers away from a Montana that's spotted. All right, I am spotted. He can clearly see me. But uh, he's going to turn in and he's going to stay angled and I'm not passing this up. 11 kilometers away. I use this the spotter plane. Now. Look at that I'm accuracy. It. it doesn't happen for anybody else. It takes. Pow! <laughs> gone. It's just gone. Two cruisers enter. Two cruisers dev struck. Tell me again that the Montana is bad. All right? You get those sorts of positions, bad things happen. But I know what you're thinking. Well, Spartan. Those are cruisers. Every battleship is capable of getting a, a, you know, a decent salvo and can easily remove a cruiser. Well, what about a slightly angled Republic who's reversing? We take the shot. It looks beautiful. The shells are on the way. And at this point, I'm like, eh, he's going to be really, really hurt, if not dead. And look at the accuracy. Good God. We hit him with seven out of 12 shells. All right, that's not bad. But of course, in true Spartan fashion, we leave him alive and that's going to bite me right in the backside literally, in yeah, about 20 seconds. Now, Yami's coming out. I'm loaded. I'm ready to go. He does start to turn in, which probably saves his life here. Because instead of dev striking him, I managed to hit a couple of shells on the belt, and that keeps him alive. And then, Republic fires his guns at me and gets a Citadel and knocks out my engine. engine well, damage. I just used my damage con a moment ago, so I have no way of getting my engine rolling again. And it's at this point I know that I'm in trouble. I got a Yami closing. I've got a lot of hit points, so there's that. I shoot up into the superstructure because, I mean, I'm at this range. I'm going to be able to rip his superstructure apart, even though Yami doesn't have the biggest superstructure in the world. Uh, tallest, maybe, but not the biggest. Um, I'm looking over for rear guns of justice on the boost part. Which is something a lot of people don't do. A lot of people never pay attention to crossfires that they have when they're in a multiple engagement like this. Like, front guns, I can't angle against this Yami right here because I'm literally broken. But uh, we finally get the ship rolling. We're going to be able to go for a drive-by here. We're not loaded, which is unfortunate, but we don't really need a lot. Fortunately for me, the uh, Yami goes for the ram and uh, my Shima says, Ram denied, sunshine! Go back to port! And just in case, he was going to hit him with a couple more. But, uh, yeah. That is hilarious. The Yami thought he had me, but he never even had his con. But uh, that's just how quickly the match ended. Like, that that was a very fast-paced, good night sunshine kind of match. And we did slap the Yami pretty good, as you guys saw. Uh, but 140,000 damage, we get second. Uh, uh, CR? Ciaro, Sario, Ciario, thank you, and the Shima for uh, bailing me out there when my engine was busted. Appreciate you. But then we end up on Sea of Fortune. And this is one of those matches that you just dream about in a Montana. It's a smaller map, meaning that we can pretty much affect the entire match without really doing a whole lot. Okay? We can go pretty much nowhere and shoot majority of the playing surface so with that in mind we're not going to just sit here like everybody else in battleships we're going to move and we're going to look for crossfires where we can one destroyer per team no carriers a couple of cruisers that could be potentially a problem we're going to go wide and see if we can't catch some people sleeping that's what we do right win our side or at least try to hold our side Look for, look for crossfires, but work for crossfires. That's the part of battleships that people just doesn't do. Like, I don't know why people don't try to work for crossfires. They would much rather the crossfires develop magically in front of them, and sometimes that does happen, especially if your teammates are actively working for crossfires, because sometimes you don't have to be the one to initiate the crossfire. Sometimes you get to be the recipient of a crossfire that a teammate initiates, but... Personally, I uh, I don't tend to get teammates that work for crossfires, so I generally initiate the crossfires, and my teammates get a re the rewards of my, my work. Um, but I do as well. Now, we have a Republic here, and you can see I... Just as I look at the man, he disappears. I'm expecting these shells to all derp into the island, and sure enough, they all derp into the island. Uh, it's real unfortunate. Could have shot the Yami instead. Uh, wouldn't have got much out of him, probably. Maybe 10k... If we get a good shot into a superstructure, 
but it would have been better than shooting the island, but we all know that the American Navy, especially American battleships, have a history of annihilating islands, so what else is new? We're just being historically accurate. But Republi comes around the island, he's slightly angled, we aim for the front section of his ship because that's where he has the least amount of armor, and we get a decent result with 12,000 hit points. But the Yami is deciding that he needs to push up in here. We've got lots of people looking at us, which is fine. That's nothing new. We're used to it. But the Yami is not a complete idiot here. He has put himself in a rough position. But uh, he's also put himself in a position where he's slowed down. He's trying to turn, or trying to get like a little bit of an angle. We're, we're opening it up, trying to let people shoot our belt where they can. We've got cruisers lobbing the islands. We've got multiple battleships shooting at us. We've got a Yami out here shooting at us. And yet the Montana just shrugs it all off. All you need to do is be cognizant of the idea that the, o the only real threat to you right now in the short term is the Yamato. Everything else you can handle for quite a while. Okay? Yamato takes giant chunks off of you when he decides to hit the right places. Everybody else just kind of, eh, nickel and dimes you. And in a nickel and dime fight, when you have the majority of the guns and they're very accurate, you're going to win those fights more often than not. So, the Yami really is the only threat here. And then I see the Republic saying, I need to get up close and personal with you. And then I get radar, which is the worst possible thing that can happen when you're about to go broadside to a Republic at close range. Fortunately for me, this Republic is not a, a smart individual. He fires HE at the broadside of my ship, and I live. And I deliver a 30,000 damage, absolute smashing blow to that Republic without citadeling him a single time. That's the firepower that this thing is capable of. Very few battleships can hit that hard that with such consistency without citadel like just a 30,000 damage non-citadel hit onto a broadside battleship however republic doesn't learn his lesson we get the rear turrets on him we don't want to open all the way up but once he fires his guns at us he does get a double fire which is unfortunate he fires his guns at us we're gonna go ahead swing in get the front guns he has angled more so we aim a little higher, trying to break guns, maybe hit superstructure, get a couple of hits, a couple into the gun, a couple into the superstructure, but we live. Now we have quite a few hit points, so we're not too worried about the fact that we have a double fire going. Uh, it is a problem, but uh, we're okay for the moment. So as long as we can get away, we manage to take out the Republic, and we are setting a course for the one battleship that is nowhere near anybody, and it's a Bismarck. I know, it's a little odd, I agree, but this Bismarck is on his way to my location, and I am on my way to his location. Why, do you ask? Well, because I want to uh, use Will to Rebuild. We've talked about how broken Will to Rebuild can be, and uh, while we're not quite in Will to Rebuild territory just yet, you can see the uh, double fire burns out, we've still got 19,000 hit points. And so we don't actually end up needing Will to Rebuild currently. Now, officially, we're down in Will to Rebuild territory as we take a couple of hits here from the Mino or whatever else shot us, possibly Brandenburg. But uh, then we get into Will to Rebuild territory. Uh, we take another hit from uh, somebody on the far right there. I think it was another battleship. But uh, we are going to gain a few hit points. And the Bismarck is going to do a little bit of a drive-by here. He's just going to go, you know... I appreciate your sacrifice, Mr. Montana, but I will take it from here. And we've already talked about Bismarck maybe not the best ship in the world to charge at the beginning of a match, but the longer the match goes, the less big targets that are to punch you, the more likely you are to succeed in your aggressive push in the Bismarck or any other German battleship that has quite a bit of armor. Now, we go ahead, we use our last heal here. We immediately start turning towards the enemy and you can see this baltimore i mean where are you gonna go sunshine you're about to run into an island we take the shot leading him beautifully he's kind of creeping he does realize that shots are on the way but by the time he starts moving quicker it's too late he takes it and we once again showcase the bonk ability that is the montana just bonked him that's all it's only the montana just does it just does 
It just bonks. Wherever it goes, it just bonks. All right? You can't blame it. It's just with what it does. Now, once again, we have another battleship shooting HE at our broadside, which, I mean, when it's, when it's a thing, never interrupt an enemy while they're making mistakes. It is that simple. So we fire back at the superstructure of the Brandenburg, as he is pretty well angled, so we are not going to go for a belt because our 16-inch guns, we know, likely not to pin that. However, if he opens up the angle, then those shots become more viable. Uh, like this. He is decently angled, but he's over-angled. We know this, so we're going to go ahead and aim a little bit higher. We don't want to hit the belt necessarily. We want to hit upper side plating if we can. And, of course, we, we get an okay shot. We only hit four shells. But, uh, you know, you don't get every shot to go exactly where you want it to be. Otherwise, Montana would be the most broken ship in the game. But, you get enough shells on target, some of them are going to find where you need to hit. And that's why the Kansas and the Montana are so good. They have enough shells that when you sling them down range, some of those shells are likely to find weak spots. Just like that. As we hit him for seven. We actually hit eight out of twelve shells that time. But seven of them found ways to do damage. <laughs> you see where I'm going here. You you add the improved pin angles that are, are American battleships. And then also go with the fact that this thing's throwing 12 of them down range. And each one of those shells weigh 2,700 pounds apiece. And are coming out of 50 caliber guns. Which means they are moving pretty quickly. You got a recipe for catching people off guard. They just don't expect to get hit as hard as they do because, after all, it's just a Montana. Like, it's it's just a Montana, guys. It's, it's just American battleship 16-inch guns. You've been fighting them for years. Everybody knows what they're capable of, but yet everybody underestimates them. Now, first shot on Mino, I'm not going to lie, I was pretty Pretty surprised that the man managed to take that and not take a single citadel. But maybe we landed too far back. He is popping in and out of existence. We are consistently landing shells on target here. Now, the last shot that we took was a bit of a rush shot. We're way behind him. He's going to get behind the island. Unfortunately, it is just what it is. Now, our cruiser navigating a treacherous minefield of torpedoes we're gonna go in here we're gonna try to back him up now you'll see i go over here i'm fairly confident the team is gonna do this but i go ahead and i ping it just in case because i want to secure the guaranteed win right we've got two caps they've got two caps if we take one of their caps they then have one cap i know math it's difficult but sometimes we gotta oh my god hello broadside conqueror remember the crossfires thing we were talking about these guys are hopelessly in a devastating crossfire and front guns alone we reach out and smash that man just another bonk you know four out of six shells find the target and we bonk the man for like 15k not quite but somewhere in that neighborhood my nose gonna get behind the island before I can bonk him unfortunate but conqueror has realized these mistakes he realizes that when you give up 15,000 damage you don't just keep sailing in a straight line continuing like nothing happened you start to angle you start to go towards the person that just bonked you and try to avoid it now he's firing armor piercing which is unusual for a conqueror and it's really bad news for the cruiser in the wichita right here because obviously conqueror oh my god we just hit that man for twenty-two thousand damage with five full pins by shooting into the superstructure of a conqueror remember conqueror doesn't really have a lot of armor so even shooting superstructure and potentially deck area, you're going to be just blapping the man. Like, Conqueror's just not particularly suited for getting into fights with other battleships. Or DPM cruisers, like a Wichita and a Mino and a Balti and a Des Moines, and oh my god, that could have been awful. Now, unfortunately, I believe our destroyer, or the destroyer does take out the Wichita here. We only take one torpedo, but that's enough, because... We darn near died there. He about got him himself a double strike. That was such a well-executed torpedo strike that, uh, I'm not gonna lie, I was not even salty. It was one of those that you, you recognize when somebody does something so great. I wasn't even expecting him to be over there. He hadn't gotten into the base until after he launched those torpedoes and they found their mark. If he gets into the base there early, then we start to try to dodge those torpedoes because we know he's there. So the fact that he holds off and waits for his torpedoes to find their mark, and then gets into the base, 
he's able to take out a radar cruiser, which is huge, and almost kills me in the process. Now, we're at 180,000 damage currently. And we're still looking for any opportunity to bonk somebody. But we're also looking for an opportunity to potentially get into Will to Rebuild so that we can survive potentially a problem here. Now, we get spotted by the Destroyer, and that means that that angry smoke screen ahead of me is going to take some shots at him. Unfortunately for that Mino, he forgot that he wasn't still in a smoke screen, and he just revealed his location to, well, bonk. <laughs> it only, only just bonks everything. It just bonks everything. You give this thing a broadside, you're getting bonked. Now, we survive with 744 hit points. We're no longer spotted, and now we are in Will to Rebuild once again. And once again, we're going to get our will to re or our health right back up in there into somewhat respectable. Now, this is why I say that Will to Rebuild is just not... It's not working as intended, guys. And I know you guys like to... You, I, I had a lot of comments. A lot of Battleship guys like to point out, Oh, Spartan, there's so many other broken things about the game. And this is our one thing that we get as Battleships. I get that. I really do. And whether it benefits me or it doesn't, which, by the way, in this case, it does benefit me. And I still am complaining about it because it shouldn't be this way. Look, the guy just hit me for 12k again. And guess what? I just heal it back. Why? Does it take any skill? Does it does it make him feel better about himself? No, it doesn't. It, it, this is a perk that needs a limiter. It has to have a limiter. And not just a, oh, you have to be this close to a friendly, because that's such an easy thing to pull off, especially in divisions. And it completely breaks the game, because it's an infinite heal. An infinite heal shouldn't be doing a, th a th any, it, they shouldn't be here. There shouldn't be an infinite heal. Now, notice that last time that the Massachusetts hit me, he no longer hit me for a lot, right? He didn't hit us very hard. And notice that the shells coming in from the uh, enemy cruiser aren't doing that much damage to us. Why is that? Well, it's pretty simple. We're saturated. We've taken so much damage throughout the course of this battle that there is no longer enough hit points allocated to my superstructure for these guys to actually farm me while I'm angled. If I'm angled, they shoot at my belt, they're going to ricochet and shatter. So they have to shoot for superstructure, and because my superstructure is completely and utterly saturated, they are forced to no longer shoot at me, but to try to shoot at other people. Now, we are no longer in will to rebuild, so we technically could be killed even with overpins and, and damaged superstructure, or saturated superstructure. But uh, at this point, they just gave up hope. They're like, okay, well, he's just will to rebuilding. I can no longer kill him, so we're not even going to try. And you can see we're up to 209,000 damage. We're going to go ahead and take a shot at this Massachusetts. He is moving forward. He's just on the outside of our range. But as he moves forward, he will get close enough for us to hit. Unfortunately, the way our shells end up flying at this range, they end up missing him to the left, which it happens. But again, we end up using will to rebuild and showcasing that it's just, it's not meant to work the way it does. There needs to be some sort of hit point limiter. So, say you're allowed to heal up to 20,000 hit points total. That would be a lot more balanced than the current infinite heal that is Will to Rebuild. And I, I know that there's a lot of people that, that find it uh, upsetting that I point this stuff out. But you guys gotta remember, I point out all the things. I point out broken destroyers. I, bro I point out broken HE spam. I point out, you know, back when the EOP was completely and utterly broken. Go watch any of my early Cleveland videos when EOP was still broken. Even though it benefits me, I'm still gonna call out that it needs to be adjusted because it just breaks the game. And at the end of the day, anything that breaks the game is not good for the game. And anything that's not good for the game is not good for the entirety of the player base. So, just making small changes. I'm not saying get rid of Will to Rebuild. I'm not saying put it, make it to where it's a useless perk. I'm just saying that it needs some sort of limiter to the amount of hit points that you can recover using that perk. Because battleships you abusing Will to Rebuild have been a problem for quite a while. It may not happen all the time. But it happens enough that it needs to be adjusted. So, let me know what you guys think down in the comments below. Again, I know I'm going to receive a little bit of hate for that, but, uh, you know, I point out the, the truth and the facts as I try, you know, as always. And if you like what I'm doing, punch the like button, leave a comment below, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and as always, I will see you in the next video.